Today I'll be talking about tonicity. So for me, I think it's a little bit hard to describe tonicity without an example. So I think we're going to delve right in and do actually three examples. All of these beakers are full of a solution. I'd like to take a moment just to emphasize what a solution is. A solution has two parts. It's made up of a solute and a solvent. The solute is the thing that is dissolved inside, for example, sugar or salt. And the solvent is the kind of the liquid or the gas, the fluid that does the dissolving. So we have the dissolver and the thing that is dissolved. Within these, let's say that all three of these solvents, so the solvent is, I'll make up a number here, let's say 50% NaCl. So this is also going to be 50% NaCl, and this is also 50% sodium chloride. And within each of these, I'm going to draw a cell. Um, in this example, it's going to be a blood cell. In example number one here, let's say our blood cell, which also has a salt content, we'll say that this, also known as our solute, has a 20% NaCl content. And perhaps in this red blood cell, um, we'll say that he's got 70% NaCl. And this one here, um, we'll do also 50. 50% NaCl. So we have three separate examples here, and we'll work through them one at a time. Our step one is to find percent H2O. And we're going to look at each part individually. So the first part is we're looking at the solute. Within this cell, if 20% is sodium chloride, the remainder would be 80% H2O. So just by doing simple subtraction, the solvent would have 100 minus 50, which is 50% H2O. The next step, so we've already found the percent of water in the solute and the solvent. So I'll make a note here, solute and solvent, because you need to do both. Step number two is to identify the direction of H2O flow. It's important that we recognize the direction of water flow. So we know that water always flows from high to low concentration. So looking here, there is a high concentration of water within the cell and a low concentration of water outside the cell. This means again that water flows from high to low, meaning that water will leave the red blood cell and flow into the solution. And I'll make a note here that the result if water is leaving our cell, the poor red blood cell will eventually lose its water, it'll become shriveled up, and it will look like that. To specify, this would be the result of a hypertonic solution. And you might be asking, why is it called hypertonic? The reason for that is because hyper means more, more tonicity. And the reason it, is more, it has more tonicity is because the solvent has more of the salt than the solute. Let's go to the second example here. Again, we're going to find the percentage of water. In this case, the red blood cell would be 30% H2O, while the surroundings would be 50% uh, H2O. Water, as we know, flows from high to low concentration. So in this case, water flows from the 50 into the 30. So water is flowing into the cell. What happens?
happens when water flows into the cell is that the cell will swell up. So it'll end up looking very large and swollen. And eventually it might even burst, which in that case we would call it lysis, cell bursting. This solution here would be known as hypotonic. And the reason it's known as hypotonic is because hypo means less, and we know that here, less of the salt in the solution compared to the red blood cell. So again, hyper means more, this has more salt. Hypo means less, this has less salt. But an easy way to remember this is I like to remember it as hypo has an O, which looks like a very a swollen cell, hypo, and that is swollen. And our final example here, in which there's an equal amount of sodium inside and outside the cell, we know that in both cases we will have 50% H2O, 50% H2O. So I guess we could say that water flows in, it's definitely flowing in, but at the exact same rate, water is also flowing out. We can't say that the solution is static. We can't say that water is not moving in or out because it certainly is. It's coming in, but at the exact same pace, water is also leaving the cell. And in this case, the cell would not change dramatically. It would still look the same. And this type of solution is called isotonic. The word iso meaning same. So let's do a very quick review. We have hyper, hypo, and isotonic solutions. And the reason these differ is because of the different amounts of concentration of salt within the solute and within the solvent. Because of these different concentrations, water will flow in different directions and allow for different results of the solute, which is our red blood cell. That's it, so first step is always to find the percentage of water that you have in both the solute and the solvent. The second step is to identify the direction that the water is flowing. Is water coming out of the cell? Is it coming into the cell? Or is it coming in and out of the cell? And from there, you can figure out what happens to the cell. Is it going to shrivel? Is it going to swell or burst? Or is it going to stay the same? And then from there, you can figure out the name of the solution. Is it hyper, hypo, or isotonic?